All right, daily vitamins, weekly supplements, doctor-prescribed pills, it can all be a lot to keep track of, can't it? Well, this is vital to be aware of, especially what you're taking and when you're taking it. Some things don't work well together and they can counteract each other. This morning, we are getting the do's and the don'ts of mixing supplements. Anesthesiologist Dr. Ebony Hilton is joining us this morning. First of all, Dr. Hilton, thank you for being here. I'm so excited to talk about this because just this morning, I took a handful of all my supplements and all my things that I take in the morning. So I'm wondering, should I not be mixing some of these things? So this is often the last thing that we all think about when it comes to our supplements. So what are some examples of vitamins and supplements that don't mix? What do we need to be thinking about? Right, you, you know, you're not alone. Up to 75% of Americans take some form of dietary supplement. It's a $60 billion industry with over 100,000 different, you know, medications and products that's available for persons. But what we do know is that there can be some interactions that are not only along the lines of your blood pressure medicines and your blood thinners, if you're on blood thinners, but also antibiotics. And typically we're taking these medications when we feel sick. And can these impact the way those medicines are absorbed and able to be utilized by our cells? And so it is something that if you are taking any type of supplement, because these are largely unregulated, you need to talk to your doctor to say, does this interact with this, right? Because we know that those medications are gonna be important to keep you healthy and alive. You know, and speaking of, you know, the importance of the supplements and also the medications, does the human body have a limit on how many supplements we can absorb at one time? Yeah, most certainly. You know, when we're talking about vitamins in particular, you have two different classes of vitamins. You have your fat-soluble vitamins. Those actually get stored within your body. That's going to be your vitamin A, D, E, and K. Um, and then you have your water-soluble um, vitamins that literally, if you have too much of it, it gets excreted out. So okay. that's one of the benefits of vitamin B and vitamin C, right, that our body doesn't necessarily store too much of it. But with those other vitamins, again, vitamins A, vitamins E, and beta carotene, what we found in studies of 68 randomized control studies, this is over 200,000 people, that if you have an excess of those, because they can be stored within the fat cells of your body, mm -hmm. that it's actually associated with an increase in mortality by about 4%, increased risk of you dying. Wow. So it's one of those things you have to be very careful that if you have a regular diet, if you have a healthy, balanced diet, you may not need extra doses of these medications. And to keep that in mind when you're thinking that since they're over the counter, this must be completely healthy. Yeah. Understand that these higher doses can have dire impact. I want to stay with caution here because there's a lot of talk right now on social media about these vitamin patches, which slowly release vitamins into the bloodstream. That's the claim. Do these work and how could they interfere with any other vitamins? Right, you know, quite frankly, the dosage that's in those patches are probably too low to actually have any meaningful impact within the body itself. It's one of those things that is great. It's a, it's a very good marketing campaign, trust me. Um, but again, the way that these vitamins are absorbed, either through fluids, um, right, water soluble, or through fat, the absorption through the skin is going to be not as consistent as taking that in an oral form. Okay. So when we're thinking about, though, in the overall totality of, of what these supplements and, and what these additional um, medications that you can take from over the counter, we have to understand they are largely unregulated. They don't go through the same strenuous process that other medications that are prescribed for you actually have to go through. And in fact, in 2015, what they saw was that there's over 23,000 ER visits related to these supplements, wow. with about a quarter of those being for young people, 20 to 34 years old, largely related to the fact that many of these supplements, because they want you to feel better, mm -hmm. can have caffeine in it. And a lot of caffeine can end up causing some cardiac issues. So we have to be very cognizant of what are the ingredients of this? And again, how does it interact and impact my body? Wow, this is great information. Dr. Ebony Hilton, the bottom line, talk with your doctor before you add anything in, before you take uh, any supplement, really. So Dr. Ebony Hilton, thank you so much for joining us with this critical information this morning.